We're delighted, Stephen, to be joined by uh, former Shamrock Rovers player John Cody, who was involved in a number of European campaigns with the Hoops. John, how are you getting on this evening? I'm good, McDara. Yes, all good, thanks. Yeah, and yourself? I'm good, very good. So this is for the, the second leg of the, uh, the European uh, Champions League qualifier tie. There's be 1,500 fans in, in Tala this evening. You've been able to get to a couple of games in Tala since there's been a limited number of fans available in the last few weeks. Yeah, I was managed to get into the Finn Harps one um, the following one, which I think was Waterford actually. Uh, the Finn Harps one was no no pleasure, but the next one was 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 uh, very very good. So, so you, you were at the yeah. the Dundalk game and a bit of an atmosphere with a, an away crowd in and a good performance oh, it, and a good win. Okay. Oh, you don't you don't realise how much you miss football until you actually go go. And then I was even getting excited about coming up the steps and seeing the pitch in absolutely perfect nick. I just yeah. got such a buzz. It was almost like uh, a drug, if you so so to speak. So yeah, I got a real buzz out of just attending the matches, even though there was uh, and, and the noise from the south stand was fantastic. I have to say yeah. congratulations to all the lads in that stand because my god, it sounded more like six thousand than the one. And and you'd been at I think at a couple of behind closed scores game. I know you'd done some co commentary yeah. for for Watch LOI, yeah. and so it it's but it's very different as you you know being a, lucky to get to a game, but the difference between being at a game with fans is something yeah. else. Oh, it's just it's just extraordinary the difference. Um, I did actually I did a, a Waterford match in Watch LOI, and uh, it, although it was brilliant for me, I could like I felt sorry for other people who couldn't attend. So. Yeah, it's just great to see the trickle coming back steadily, more and more people. I just can't wait for the place to be full and rocking and just everything back to normal. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll be soon. Yeah, so at least there's an extra 500 of the game on, on, on Tuesday yeah. night. And, yeah. uh, you know, difficult enough uh, tie for, for Rovers now. You, you were involved in, I say, a few uh, European games before. The first one you were involved in was, was 82, was a trip out to, to Romania, I think it was. Romania, yes. Um, University Croyova, um, which is, <laughs> which wasn't, well, they were a very good side, I have to say, yeah. an excellent side. I think they were an army team. So again, they were full-time professionals, basically, who yeah. joined the army as, a, as they used to in the communist days then. So um, as just as an occupation, they were all full-time footballers, excellent players, a lot of them. But uh, yeah, I didn't play in the, in the first, in the, I think they had the first leg here in Milltown and I didn't play in that but then I was I got to join the uh, the squad going out to my surprise and uh, oh yeah it was uh, it was an experience and a half one I'll never forget in good it was good. it was one really behind behind the iron curtain at that stage oh, in, in 82 yeah we I think we it took it took like a day and a half to get there <laughs> and a, a day and a half coming back because you had to we flew from Dublin to Zurich then Zurich to Bucharest Okay. And then it was in a, a jalopy of a bus. I don't know where they dragged it up from, but uh, it was an it was like a oh, it was an awful yoke. So it was like a four hour bus journey then to Croyova, wherever the hell Croyova is, and there's some guards to Bucharest. I still don't know. And then we got to Croyova, and it was oh, geez, the poverty was insane. It really was queues for everything. It was a queue. I remember myself and Mick Smith the old goalkeeper, um, we were rooming together. So we decided to go out for a walk <laughs> one morning of, I think the morning of the match. And there was queues everywhere. Mick, of course, not a, goes straight up to the top of the queue, looks in just to see what it was for. And all the, the, the queue of people were shouting at him, get back to the back, <laughs> go on back to the back. <laughs> we were queuing up for chickens or whatever. The scrawniest looking chickens I've ever seen as well in my life. But yeah, that was it was it was hard it was hard going, and they were a very good side, and it was a, a, like a packed house of like twenty thousand people at the match, and they were all in uniform, so <laughs> it was quite intimidating, let's say. That's quite the the debut in in Europe for you then playing into a game yeah, like that. Yeah, and I remember actually one of my biggest memory from the match, uh, besides Ronnie Murphy getting sent off, um, was. Um, I was playing uh, wide on the left. I was playing f almost outside left at the time. And a little stocky, oh, like a, a Mexican uh, fullback was playing with a real tight haircut. And uh, I remember one time I went past him. I actually got, I nicked it past him and uh, swung it across. Nothing came of it. But I looked down at my knee, my, my knee and my kneecap had two nicks where his studs had almost broken my leg, I would say. So another another two inches and I'd been just dead. So 
after that, I said, well, look, we're out this time. I hope he touches the ball. Eventually, joins. He took me off. I was absolutely delighted. That's, yeah, yeah, no. And then the a couple of years later was the the game against Linfield, and I know it's 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 always one you, you haven't been lucky to talk to a number of guys that were involved in the four row. It's kind of one that one that got away, and oh, and you absolutely. lost on the away away goals rule, which. Um, you know, it's actually been done away this season, so yeah, it would have yeah. gone to would have gone to extra time if extra if, time if that's completely. the way. Yeah. 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 What was the security yeah. like up in in Windsor Park? That must have, again, that must have been something else. Yeah, it was. Um, from my own point point of view, my memories of it were um, uh, it was all grand. Like a few guys spitting at you. Obviously, when you're coming out, the ma- uh, they had a kind of a mesh tunnel, uh, and um, of course, a few young players be. You're feeling this, you're feeling that, or whatever, you, and they're throwing a few golliers at you. But um, yeah, it was it was a brilliant atmosphere, it was absolutely brilliant. I I loved it. I have to say, although I did get a fright in my life. Some I was doing a warm up and I was running out towards the their main stand, or the, not the main stand, the stand opposite the main stand. Um, and I was running out there and running back, and then I run out again. Well, this banger exploded behind me. Uh, um, when I was just got to the edge of it, oh, nearly crap myself. I have to say, it was absolutely tired, brutal. But um, yeah, and then uh, the, another memory from that was Dinny Lowry coming on. Dinny was uh, the trainer, basically the goalkeeping coach. And he said, okay, lads, let them have it. And we unzipped these, the green and white, um, we had these green um, tracksuit tops, and then just unzipped them to reveal the, the, the rover screen away hoops. That crowd went absolutely <laughs> ballistic. I mean, they went mad, and we, I, I love. I just hair stood up and I said, "Oh, this is brilliant. This is abs- This is why you play football is to be in occasions like this." And again, they got a man sent off on the night. Uh, David Keely assaulted some bloke, and he got sent, the other fella got sent off. Gibson, I think his name was, for I don't know why this ref, ref sent him off anyway. And they were down to ten. We chance after chance from my memory i'd be about four glorious chances to score and, and that that was the first leg that ended nil all yeah, and so back in yeah, back in milltown yeah. Past, yeah yeah and then we ended up back in milltown got done by a sucker punch not like us at all from a set piece a corner kick uh jeffrey scored from a, one of those was ping ponging around he sticks out his toe and in it goes and then i think uh, peter got one back peter eccles got one back uh one all Swamped them, but they were a very good side. Linfield, they were equally as good as us on the night for sure. But uh, we, we were still a better team over the two legs, no doubt about it. But they went oh. ahead, they went through, and they, I think they did quite well actually after that. Yeah, they went, they went on a few rounds. Was it difficult at that time? I know everyone was in the same boat, but it was pre, it would have been pre season, like Rovers this time are in the yeah. middle of the season. Now, yeah. Slovan are just starting their season, but yeah. it must have made it a little bit difficult, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because as a part timer, you're trying to get fit for these European toys. Now everybody was in the same boat, as you say. Like Linfield were in the same boat, so they're only part timers too. Um, but everybody else we played were all full time, and it does help if you're training every day rather than as I was going into work as a postman, obviously. So I was coming home and then going to train, and I wasn't the worst because at least I finished a bit early and might be able to get some kip and stuff. So you, you prepare yourself for training then. But it was hard for other guys like who had who had, as I described them, normal jobs, <laughs> uh, to come in from work and straight out to training. It's really tough. And the following season, you played Hanbit, and I think they were another really good side who would, like, they were full of internationals. Yeah, absolutely. We saw uh, Lajos Tatari was uh, was the man for for the, for Hanbit. But again, they had, they had, I think they had a couple of other internationals. I think one the centre house was an international as well. I think the goalie might have been as well. But, um, they were cracking side. I think they're the best side I ever played in Europe for sure. The, the tarry was class. Anybody who was at Milltown for that match will just know the couple of just a couple of little things he did, but it just changed the whole complexion of the match. We like we were bombing, bombing on and bombarding them and stuff. And then next of all, the tarry took the game with a scruff of the neck. And that's what really world class players do. They they just decide right now is now is the time. I'm going to switch on. Turns the game with just one. It's yeah. only a flick, or it's a, a touch, or but a magnificent flick, or a magnificent touch that puts somebody straight in and goal. And that's exactly what happened. And he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Joy to watch, actually. 
And what was the, the away leg like? Was that another kind of big communist stadium with a big crowd? Yeah, it was. Yeah, and again, Honva was the, is the army team in, in uh, Budapest. So, um, yeah, we were, and we went over. We didn't disgrace ourselves by any means. We was back to the, back to the walls. You, we go out, stick a 4 4 2, which soon becomes 4 5 1, and then becomes yeah. 4 6. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's really difficult. And even though we, we like to be on the ball and we like to pass it around. We were a good side. I mean, everybody was comfortable on it. It was just, these guys are on a different planet, basically. When you're part-time, you're just chasing to your tail. But really, yeah, you come- yeah, this was the, the, the step up in difference. And then in uh, 86, there was the draw against Celtic, which, you know, such yeah. a such a big tie. I know, I think that, so the first leg was in Milltown. I know the, the coins put in the additional kind of seating behind the goal, which... Uh, I think it was a bit rickety. You might maybe tell us a little bit of that, but that must have been a huge game in terms of, you know, big crowd at Milltown, Celtic, you know, the, yeah. that, that Irish connection. And, yeah. you know, there must have been, you know, big press around, you know, the oh, Irish champions playing the Scottish was, champions. Yeah, it, was, it was huge, McDara, as you can well, ima- well imagine. Now, I don't suppose you were there yourself. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite old enough, but yeah, I'd love to have been, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't think so. Um, yeah, it was it was a huge game. Actually, it must be one of the biggest games in the club's history. Like bringing Celtic to in a European Cup tie to to Milltown. Yeah, um, the first thing I remember was at the warm up because uh, I, I used to warm up at the Milltown Road end, obviously, and they they built this um, this uh, stand, temporary stand, but it was just basic um, uh, scaffolding with a yeah. few. Deeds thrown across it. <laughs> you can actually see the thing move. I just say, oh, thank God none of my family are in that. Because this could be a tragedy. We could be talking about something else completely, you know. Yeah. Oh, it, was, it was an awful young. And you could see it moving. You could see it swaying with the with the amount of bodies they had. But thank, thankfully, it didn't come down. It's managed to stay up. Um, yeah, the crowd that night were just probably second best time rover support I think I've ever heard. It was it was just non-stop from both sides. Like they brought a lot of the, uh, the Yahoos as well. They brought a good few lads. The crack was 90, I believe, in the in the stadium and, and in the pubs around the place. So uh, it was a fantastic uh, night. Um, uh, pleasure to play in, actually, and we should have beaten. What, what players stand out for, like Paki Bonner would have been playing that, that night yeah, for, for Celtic? Yeah, a different class altogether. We, our set pieces were brilliant. We're used to like, pinging balls. I used to take corners and stuff and pinging balls into the box and we'd get a good few rewards in the in a league game or a cup match uh, at home in the domestic scene. But this fellas just coming out, plucking them like apples from the tree. It's just a ginormous, a giant. I didn't realise until you're standing beside him, of course, he's an absolute giant of a man. And uh, that was one of the things that, that uh, stood out. Um, Paul McStay was super impressive. Although I have to say, his brother was playing Willie, and I thought he was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to match it up, you know, balance it up. I, definitely, we had an opportunity to get, to get in uh, past him, and we did a couple of times. Liam, Liam O'Brien had a chance. Um, I think Paul Doolan had a chance. Uh, we just we we absolutely swamped them for about thirty minutes. We just couldn't get the breakthrough, and if you don't get the rewards, the old doubts start to come into your head, and then we got done by a sucker punch. Uh, it was a late, late enough goal, I think, yeah, was it? 80, 80, 80, between 80 and 90 anyway. And it came from, I was always raging that it changed my mind. It came from a corner that I took um, in the corner up the far end, away from the Milltown all then. And uh, instead of putting it in the box, because I was sick of Packy coming up, catching the every bloody corner I put in, he came out and caught. So I, I saw McNeville was making a run to the edge of the box, played it into him. And he... The fella read it, came out, and Mick missed it, breakdown, and Mordo, Mordo stuck it in the back of the net then, the far end, in about 20 seconds. It was just ridiculous. Yeah, the, the, the sign of a good side. They get that, yeah, they get that chance absolutely. and they punish you. And at that stage of the game as well, full of running. And they're obviously, um, I know they're full-time and all, but they haven't played a match, I don't think, in the league around it. So, yeah, um, it's one of my biggest regrets. Yeah, I should just stick with what you know. Just throw it in the box. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the experience like playing in, in Parkhead? Was it a big crowd that, yeah, that night? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't massive. It wasn't massive. Yeah. Uh, 
we had a, we had a great uh, traveling support to God. I, can, I can only I can only imagine and, what it was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were no, they were absolutely fabulous. And the Celtic supporters, of course, they give you a stand ovation. They give you one anyway, just because you're Irish. <laughs> Never mind from bringing the. I remember as a grass uh, the gas thing ha happened uh, pre-match because we were saying like, what's our where away gear? We didn't. I don't think we, we ever changed. Uh, in the domestic game, because we had no reason to, because everybody, we never clashed with anybody. So we, we were uh, uh, wondering, wondering what uh, gear we were going to have. So it's like, it's getting close to, like an hour before kickoff, there's no sign of any jerseys on the hooks or anything. So we go, what's the story here? So next all these two cardboard boxes land in the middle of the floor at Celtic Park, the way dressing room. Castle Ree Celtic is written on the side, right? So we opened up the boxes and these gold, what's common colours, gold, gold jerseys and blue, uh, blue nicks and uh, <laughs> Rover's, Rover's uh, logo on it, stuck on it, stuck on it. Oh, we fell around the place laughing, talk about like, oh, it was a joke shop. It was a complete they're, joke. Uh, they're, like, they're, they'd be, they'd be a collector's, a collector's oh, item, John. I'm sorry I didn't keep the bloody thing. Yeah, absolutely raging because, yeah. You get a you get a, you get a mint for it on eBay. <laughs> yeah. So we're hoping that Rovers European run will go on. You'll be back in the, the stadium with maybe bigger crowds later on. And um, like yeah. this is a good rover side that you know could could go far in Europe. And the way that the draw is with the champions the champions route means there's really? plenty of opportunities for rovers to play a few more games in Europe this season. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Although I'm not writing them off yet. Getting an early goal in Tala. And you never know. I thought they started the game away game really, really well. We had a couple, couple of, of chances, chances. Yeah, uh, I think Sean and uh, Richie uh, had a, had a couple of efforts. If Sean, oh, you'd expect him to score. From, well, at least hit the target from there. He seemed to scuff it. But as I was saying, um, if if that if that goes in, it's a whole different ball game. So it's important we start properly uh, against them on Tuesday and. Um, yeah, try and get an early one back and might, we'll see what they're made of then. Fingers crossed. No, that's that's great, John. Listen, I really appreciate your time. Thanks very much for chatting to us this evening. Oh, you're welcome back there anytime. <laughs>